Folks, thanks for joining us. Uh, in this episode, we're talking about two invasive species. The first one is a mullen, and we're going to talk about the pros and cons of those or how to identify them and what to do about them. And the other one is a, a honey locust or a thorn locust tree. So stay with us. We're going to get into those uh, species. Hi, this is Tim and Dole. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses, a podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and being a steward of the land. Hey, if you like what these two dumbasses are doing, please hit the like button and subscribe today. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. Joel, today we're going to talk about what? A couple of more invasive species. So we did an episode last summer uh, about uh, wild mustard. And uh, this is, uh, we're adding, adding to that agenda as far as the invasive species that we're dealing with uh, on an ongoing basis. It's just crazy, you know. I mean, as we go out uh, and my wife and I are attacking these invasive species and she goes, it feels like we have 100,000 invasive species. And I said, well, you get control of one of them and other will appear, right? I guess by nature, they're invasive for a reason, right? That uh, right. means they're pretty popular and they're hard to get rid of uh, and they suck. But... Uh, yeah, so should we get right into it? Um, I think first one's a tree that I'm going to talk about, and the other one's a plant that you're going to talk about. So first invasive species I want to talk about, Tim, and that I'm dealing with, you're constantly dealing with, is uh, thorn, thorny locusts. So it sounds like thorny locusts um, or black come in two different types of trees, honey locusts and black locusts. Not all locust trees have thorns, so we're just going to reference the ones with thorn because there's... A lot of pros and cons to these trees. Uh, first of all, let's talk about identifying these trees. Um, locust trees, thorny locust trees, have uh, bark that's uh, got plates on it. it. It can be gray to black, thus the black locust uh, name. And the, the bark is uh, what I what I interpret when I look at it. It's uh, plated. It look, to me, it looks almost like a plate around it. And at the edges of the bark, it'll start to curl up. So it's this kind of prehistoric di dinosaur kind of uh, thing. That is how I kind of think about the, the bark. You I know, it's tectonic plates. I agree with that. That's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. 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 And then um, the leaves are compound leaves, meaning that uh, the, you got a stem, and on opposite sides of the stem, there's a leaf that matches the other one. And on the end, there'll be one leaf sticking out on the end. So um, uh, really easy to identify the leaves once by the leaves once you um you know once you know what you're looking for you know what going into that i i agree once you identify them a couple of times you can be driving in your car and see like the groves of locust trees right they're super once you get an eye for them yeah easy to identify the, the leaves give them away that's for sure but um so that that's probably the easiest things about uh identifying the trees the bigger they get obviously the more that the easy to identify and then probably the biggest identifier for them is even at a small and we'll, we'll show you several real examples here on your farm but even at a small um sapling state they have they literally have thorns on them um, at that state and they only get bigger and more of them as they grow up so that's for sure um Let's talk about, uh, you know, where they're found and some of the characteristics. They're found mostly in the Midwest. Uh, the height of these trees range from 30 to 70 feet, um, and they're fast growers. They're up to three feet a year, these trees can grow. And uh, so what that means... I challenge that. I, th I think it can grow six to seven feet a year. I mean, these things are voracious. There's, they've got steroids. I mean, of all the trees out there, well... I mean, there's there's some other shrubbish trees, but trees, trees. If I think of trees, these black locusts grow really fast. So, but do you think about that? Even at at three feet a year, you know, in in five years, you got a 15 foot to 20 foot tree, um, which is just unheard of and and in a real problem, yeah. right? So, um, so the growth rate we talked about the wood in these uh, trees as they mature and get big, it's very very dense so what i mean by that is if you had a chunk of uh, locust honey locust hickory oak walnut you pick these logs up same size same shape by far the honey locust or the thorn uh, locust is going to be uh, very heavy uh, given the same shape in fact it's so heavy if you threw it in water it doesn't float so because of that denseness in this wood 
I mean, it's super hard wood. Um, they're used for fence posts, uh, tool handles, pallets, anything that, um, you know, it needs some hardiness to it. It's going to last a long time. But we've got experience using it for other things, right? Well, and, and so that's kind of all the bad things about it. You and I as woodworkers have had some uh, fortunate opportunities to use some locusts um, in woodworking. And it's, uh, it's beautiful. First of all, it's beautiful wood. It's pretty easy to work with. And, uh, man, it is hard as, as steel, yeah, right? super hard. So Beautiful grain. And, and it's not something you see every day. You know, you can it takes stain really well and sands really well, and uh, it's very unique in in its properties. So not not always an, a bad thing. But uh, let's let's talk about a few more of the pros and cons of these trees. Um, pros, uh, again, woodworking wise, they're fast growing trees. If, if you want something that provides shade, um, you know, this is a great tree. Again, we're talking about the thorny locusts, uh, but there are some species of locusts that um, have all the same characteristics that we're talking about of a locust but without the thorns so um, there there are those type of trees out there that are uh, fantastic um, you know for shade and and want a mature hardwood tree in a quick period of time that's what you want to shoot they are beautiful i mean they are they really are but the biggest cons um, of it is is we've talked about the thorns which can get ginormous and i'm not i'm not kidding right i mean you can you you see some <laughs> well, on the trunks on the trunks <laughs> of some of these mature trees you know up to 12 inches long these thorns can get but um i know you normally see them you know four to six inches but uh, just prehistoric nasty stuff especially if you get a whole field of them um other cons is these uh how they repopulate is they actually get a pod that looks like a bean and uh, these pods drop, so they become very messy over time. And, um, and they do, do attract certain insects, which are, which, are certain, which are problems, right, for other trees and, and whatnot. But um, how to get rid of these? Really, the best way to get rid of them is when they're small, you can cut them, clip them. Um, and when they get big, you got to cut them with a chainsaw. However, no matter how you get rid of them, unless you take up the root, um, and they're small saplings, you have to apply some herbicide on them, otherwise they come back um, like, like that. So if you're gonna cut them down of any size um, and not remove the root, you've gotta put a Tordon type herbicide on them to keep them dead and make sure that they don't populate. So with that, I wanna go back to pros and cons. You know, one, the one positive is, is it provides a lot of mast, so the deer, deer and other wildlife love them. But the problem is, is that's how it spreads, right? It does, and and the thorns will also, when they fall off, they'll they'll sprout and uh, and and spread also. So um, these thorny locusts, um, the the really deer seem to be attracted to them, not only for the shade and the the habitat that they form as far as bedding and safety, uh, but these pods, man, they just go out of their way to eat these pods. But man, it's in my mind. It is, and the reason they're invasive is it's not worth all of the all of the bad things that these trees bring to your property. Yeah. I mean, they will like if you got one of them, you got a hundred of them, and um, they're only going to grow fast. They're going to have thorns, so ATVs, trucks, tractor tires, anything Animals. like that. Not to include, you know, feet, and these things will go right through your tennis shoes and shoes for sure. I've been fortunate. I mean, on. I've had several go through my boot, and uh, none of them go, I hate to even say this, I've been fortunate not to have them um, get into my foot. I, when I was little, I I've wasn't as fortunate, so I've experienced it, and it's, it's no fun at all, um, and it's bad. So, but, uh, well, uh, let's go out there, and uh, we'll try to find some of these and give you some uh, more, you know, nature views of what these trees look like at various stages of their life cycle. Perfect. Trying to give you an example of uh, what these locust trees will look like when they're small. This locust tree is probably weeks old, you know, probably somewhere between four and eight weeks. But you can see it's already got uh, the thorns on it and uh, a good example of the compound leaves. So this is a great opportunity to get rid of uh, this locust at this age. It's easy to deal with cut it and spray it and uh, it's a done deal. 
but you want to get to them before they get to this stage because uh, it just becomes more work and more painful work. But um, again, the leaves, compound leaves, really easy to identify. And then the uh, bark in the background is really uh, identifying of this tree. And then you can see the thorns in there. So Tim, we're back. Um, that was thorny locusts and you've got some, unfortunately you've got some good examples out. It's not super bad. You get you, you and, and the wife are doing a great job of controlling them, but there's another species out there that we want to talk about that's invasive. And that is, yeah, it's mullen, you know, uh, so first off I have, as we talked about CP 25 fields over a good third of my property, our property. And, uh, I've seen these big, tall, yellow flowers and they're beautiful. And, uh, I've never mowed them off because I, I thought they were cool looking. And one day you were over here and you go, Hey, that's an invasive species. He goes, you better get a hold of that. He goes, it, it's going to be bad. So I'm like, all right, it's time to do some more research. So that's exactly what we did. And we found that it's called mullen, right? So, uh, I think 18 states find it to be a noxious or invasive weed at this juncture. Uh, it typically grows in grounds that have been recently disturbed. Hence, we're seeing them in this CRP fields that I have, and our CRP fields not being sprayed after a year, right? Where if it's crop ground, you're always spraying. So these, these we're gonna come back to that spraying here in a second. So. These plants will grow one to seven feet tall, have pretty hairy leaves. If you know what lamb's ear looks like, uh, looks very familiar to a, a domestic plant that my wife has in her garden called lamb's ear. Has very hairy leaves, uh, long, but these stems are long and it'll grow to like seven feet tall. And then it has, on that stem, it will have really beautiful yellow flowers. I mean, it's majestic and I, I still maintain it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful flower. Uh, but in the fall, after it dies off, it will, it will build out like a brown corn stalk, brownish black corn stalk. And that, those stalks can stay in the air or standing for multiple of years. And uh, the problem with that is, is these stalks each produce about 100,000 seeds. And, uh, and the important thing about these seeds is, is um, they stay in the soil for decades and still viable. So all the sense is, hey, we, we got to get them under control. So with that, uh, the good thing is, is, hey, it does spread by seed versus, you know, by the root system. So it's easier to get under control. One of the other benefits of this plant, though, is, is it has a long tap root. So it... it from a soil perspective, it's breaking up the soil and it's starting to uh, lessen compaction. But again, it's invasive. So how do you get control of it? Well, if, if you're able to, you can spray it in the spring or fall uh, and you can kill them because it builds out like a little rosette before it starts to uh, put up. And so it's a biennial, meaning every two years. So you'll see this rosette in the ground and you, if you spray it right then and there, you're gonna kill it. But these hairy leaves uh, are resistant to um, herbicides. So if you really wanna kill it with an, herbic with an herbicide, you need to put something to make it a little hotter like crop oil. And we'll put some links in here to give you some ideas on uh, some other ideas if you have this problem. Another way but once it gets mature, herbicide's not gonna work on it. Hmm. So uh, it's very resistant to herbicide. So one of the best methods is, is you can go out there and just pull it up or take a shovel and, and spade it. And uh, we're gonna go out and we're gonna show you some brown stalks. We're gonna go and show you how easy these things are to pull up, particularly after a rain. And I, I really believe that's probably, I mean, if you've got a CRP field, you're not going to go out and spray it to control it. So you have to find another method. And I really think this method's a, a better method. So, yeah, um, again, very identifiable once you know what you're looking for, right? Because it's kind of, it actually is a pretty cool looking plant, very unique looking plant too. Yep. 
And uh, did they talk about what herbicides um, to use if you are going to try? They do. Uh, there's a. They talk about uh, using glyphosate with uh, crop oil, and then they also have some other types of cocktails uh, in the documentation. So again, I'll provide that. Uh, yeah. We won't, we won't waste your time. And I'm assuming, Tim, if you are going to spray them or try to get these, you want to get them before the seeds come out, which is, what, late summer? I don't Yeah, I think we're approaching, approaching that now. You definitely want to get it before, uh, um, I'm going to say flowered, but towards the tail end of the flower where those seeds have matured, you want to get it, get it before then. Before your fall deer food plots uh, go in, you got to get it. My, you know, my first experience with these things, I was driving quite a ways back to my home property where I grew up. So I was trying to do a very remote food plot and uh, it, it worked great the first year. And the next year I came in, I seeded it and everything. And about this time I went up to kind of check it midsummer. Man, I had a whole field of the, really? of the whole field of these things. And I called them, a, I didn't know what they were. I called them a corn plant, but I knew they were bad. And, uh, it, you know, just, uh, you, you got to deal with them right away. Otherwise, they, they, they will ex explode. But, uh, hey, what do you say we go out and uh, look at, at some of these mullein plants and uh, come back and, and show some footage of them? Yep. All right. Sounds great. Sounds good. So, Joel, this is that mullein we talked about. And what you see here is we've got one that's just about ready to start flowering. And then here's one from, you know, years past. Again, I never mowed these down because I thought they were beautiful, but but these these gonna be pretty invasive. So now that they're at this stage, herbicide's not gonna work. And you, you can either take a shovel and dig down, or as you can see, this thing's pretty big. And you pull that up and that's all it takes. There's that tap root I was telling you about. That, that that's the good part about it. But we're gonna we're gonna eradicate these this way and just eliminate it from this area. I'm gonna attempt to take this out and be careful. Well, Joel, I mean, uh, that was pretty interesting going out and seeing those, the mullein and, the, and then I, before then the locust. So um, I really hope this was helpful for our viewers and listeners because, uh, I mean, this is just two of the species that we're dealing with. And like, as my wife said, there's, there's, a, there's a large variety of them. So It's never ending, but it starts with identification, right? That's um, right. Knowing if it's a good a good species or a bad species so that helps you know going back to our dnr series with uh, jeremy cochran you know there's one thing that resonates that he always said to me he goes the he goes the the one action that's not acceptable is to do nothing right and he said so using like we show we showed how many locusts we have to do nothing we just let them run rampant so any progress you made even though you don't get them eradicated you are making progress you're just stopping it from becoming even more of a problem don't give up yeah you just can't give up for sure sure anything else to uh, to finish with uh, we'd love love our audience comments um if you have you know other invasive species that you want us to to talk about um we're more than happy to do a couple more episodes on this or episodes on this and on uh you know thorny locusts and um mullen if there's a uh, success that you've had you know, please share it with us uh, via comments or emails. Absolutely. And as, um, as I've said in other episodes, really value you as our listeners that we're getting a lot of emails, a lot of comments on some of our episodes. Um, if you like what we're doing, give us a like on our, on our episode. And then uh, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to our channel, really helps us and uh, really costs you nothing. So, um, but until next time. Be safe. Have, Have fun, fun and get, get outdoors. outdoors. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.